Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Fred and Hirt, and um, I understand it's going to be Fred who's going to start with the presentation. Um, we're going to share screens, so it'll be a little delay between uh, putting his screen up. So, uh, Fred, when you're on, off you go. All right. Uh, yet you do the presentation, right, first? And uh, I... Um... And hello to all. And I'm Geert, um, and uh, next to me you see uh, Fred. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for this invitation, and thank you all for um, for, for joining us. Um, I um, I will introduce first Fred uh, and let him uh, talk a bit, and then I'll uh, join. Uh, we we are both people that uh, have the feet on the earth, but at the same time have a fascination for the possibility of what is the so-called uh, locative media or digital storytelling. Uh, the Fred is coming from the same angle as I do, uh, working a long time in on a very independent um, way uh, on ecological uh, and uh, global issues, uh, but uh, still staying uh, the focused very locally and um, with many projects behind us which we will um, talk about uh, uh, briefly uh, we came to an uh, to a collaboration together um, that uh, started last year uh, with uh, see geomap which is a tool to connect with the earth in the first place uh, not a digital tool in, in itself but an instrument to to be part of our environment and to be aware of our environment on a more profound way, to communicate, to collaborate, to create together. And um, we uh, came up with this last project, uh, Libraries as Gardens, which I will explain um, uh, in my part. But first I would like to ask uh, Fred if he wants to tell something about CGMAP. Yes, sure. Uh, I want to thank you, Andrew Stug, for the invitation. And it's a great pleasure uh, to be with you all. And I want also to profit for the moment uh, to send my gratitude to all the trees you can have around you, probably the trees you love and you can see from your window. And uh, now I will share my screen during like 10-15 uh, minutes uh, presentation. And uh, it's very important to explain, I will, uh, I will share my screen now, that uh, in this presentation, I will show mostly screenshots of maps. But really, uh, behind these maps, there are uh, web, uh, web apps experience and work. So I just invite you later, uh, to check these maps, discover the, the entries, discover what people uh, uh, published. And uh, also you can, uh, each map, you can load each map on your mobile phone to do the work if you are not too far from the area. So I would like, first of all, uh, to explain uh, what is... Uh, why locative media is important for environmental awareness? Because it is an opportunity to root stories and memories into places and make places the main characters of the stories. I will especially present the projects we have done with the tool we have created, CGOMA. Uh, I have to clarify because behind the few projects I will present, there are a lot of creative and inspiring minds. And I am not only talking about humans. Uh, this is a view of my, my area in, in Alicante, in Spain. But before, uh, I want to do a quick uh, technical introduction about the tool we created, CGOMAP. Uh, it's a, loc a locative media editor and a web app with a single URL. If you look at it from your computer, it is an editor. And if you open it on your mobile, it's a web app. Uh, the origins of the project is a collaboration with the Spanish art collective Escoita 
and the GPS Museum Lab we, we created. The base, the base is open source. The project is inclusive and one of uh, the most uh, passionate and active collaborators now is Gerd Weimeyer from uh, Made of Walking. I like to say that CGOMAP is a collaborative bridge between the technosphere and, and nature. Uh, step one, places are memories. Locative media can make visible the invisible. Places are memories. Locative media can make visible the invisible. We need to keep memories to convert spaces into places we can live in. In 2014, uh, we did the collaborative map of the Spanish exile from 1936-1939 with the Spanish Cultural Center of Mexico. It is one of a long list of breathtaking stories of exiles, a walk with no return. The Spanish Cultural Center, with our help, is organizing uh, several um, participative workshops to collect memories of survivors and their childs and grandchilds. These memories are sonic and visual works, mostly in the city of Mexico. With the Spanish poet, Samir Delgado, now living in Mexico, we went in a, a new direction and searched for lost poetry from the poets of the exile. The project is called Nepantla. Nepantla is the feeling of in between. And we populated public uh, uh, um, poetry in the public gardens of several cities uh, recorded by young Mexican students. We rescued uh, forgotten books from the libraries. Step two, locative media can contribute to heal the community and the environment. Locative media can contribute to heal the community and the environment. In 2017, we started to create a, a set of five maps and a very large, large number of works, layers of memories of the city of Murcia in Spain about water, architecture and history. We need to reactivate and facilitate memories to see deeply when we are outdoors. I like to say that we need to see our ancestors to love our territory. Step three, locative media is an opportunity to be connected in the deep sense of the term. Locative media is an opportunity to be connected in the deep sense of the term. We are collaborating uh, since a long time uh, with uh, the environmentalist uh, Rich Blundell to explore how we can use locative media to discover the intelligence of nature and expand our ecological identity. This year, we invited people during the COVID-19 to share their gratitude to the earth. The feeling of gratitude, uh, I believe, is one of the basics for the reconnection with the earth. It celebrates the belonging, the beauty and intelligence of the earth we are living in.
Yes, we are living in the earth, not on the earth. I think it's very important. In this contribution uh, from the artist uh, Peter Bosch, it is interesting to notice a transcalarity in his gratitude, connecting the micro with the macro. Another concept we are exploring with Rich, uh, this kind of audiovisual stories are what we like to call Earth stories. I would like to mention another project from the Spanish artist Veronica Perales called Ecología de un Abrazo. It's an ecology of a hub where people during a workshop are invited to draw the, their inner trees and roots. The participants were invited to go uh, in a public park, a public garden, shoot the tree to record by voice a little story about their experience and geolocate. These are the aspects I consider more relevant for the creation of loc locative contents. Places are memories. Sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Places are memories. Locative media can make visible the invisible. Locative media can contribute to heal the community and the environment. Locative media con con can contribute to be connected at a local level in the deep sense of the term between each other and with nature. Thank you. Alfred, you have to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, sure. I stop. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, uh, Gert, you must start mm -hmm. sharing your screen. <laughs> good, good. Here we go. So... My part of the story is uh, uh, not technological at all. I come uh, from a background uh, where the physical and uh, nature is an immersive experience in itself and uh, where I was trying as an artist and as a poet uh, to connect with uh, the, to, to the body. And only in the later uh, uh, part of my artistic trajectory, I came uh, to Escoitar, uh, the group in Galicia, um, uh, and to, to Fred, uh, and uh, being fascinated and intrigued by, by the imaginary potential of these technological tools, which are not contradictory to um, uh, nature, uh, but that, uh, at the contrary, can indeed, as uh, Fred suggested and showed, connect you on a, on a deeper way. Um, like as I told you, I'm in the first place a poet. Uh, the, my wor world are the world of words. Um, I walk um, creatively. Uh, I create events, and uh, all is um, focused on on space, space and the voice, sound, um, and connection of people. Um, I. Um, the work I make is, is text-based, but for me a text is not something that is uh, two-dimensional, but it's uh, something that is written on the space itself, that is written with the body, that is uh, um, experienced with the whole body. And uh, that actually connects very well with, with the act of walking. Uh, for me, reading a text is like making a walk. Uh, because I don't see it as linear, uh, going from one point to the other uh, on an very straight way, but um, giving you the possibility to wander, uh, to lose yourself, uh, to, uh, to on an intuitive way to explore things that you have never uh, experienced before, to be surprised. 
uh, I would like to share with you some images and, and, and some, uh, some key moments in, in my trajectory, which started already a long time ago, in 2003 actually, when as an, as an writer I started to, to walk uh, uh, creatively. I, mean, I always walked in my life, very long, uh, long distance walks. And I met a colleague, uh, Stefan van Biesen, which is a Belgian artist. Um, and we made the first walk together in a forest and started to exchange ideas how language is more than human. Um, how, um, as a poet, you can actually not only write for people, uh, but you can also write for uh, other species, for nature, uh, for plants, uh, uh, for forests. And how actually this is not a one-way, but a, a, a two-way communication, how much language there is, how much communication there is possible with the non-human world uh, and creativity. Uh, Rich will tell us much about that in the next session that I got for, uh, that uh, creativity and, and art is not only human, but is an, there's a long story starting uh, with the beginning of our universe and um, is only emerging um, through our human presence and will not stop after eventually we as humans will not be here anymore. Creativity is part of the universe as languages. So I was interested as a poet always more in, in the in the voice, in how poetry manifests itself in space, um, more than, than the text, which for me is only like a score of a musical, uh, musical piece. It gives you directions, but it is not the work itself. Uh, the, one of the first things I did in these walks in forests, so, which I saw as a sort of libraries, I have also a an, an background in, in library science, and I worked for a while as a, lab, a librarian. Um, I uh, started to work with people in forests in Arboreta, the libraries of forest, of, of trees. Um, the, seeing nature as a sort of library and as a place where you can collect um, experiences, live experiences, um, the, as a sort of living books you, you write with your body. Um, and how we can surpass the limitations of language uh, that only make sense between us humans. So I started to study how insects communicate. So they communicate by moving, by moving around, by flying, by making trajectories like bees do. And plants that, that communicate uh, also without any words, but just by sounds, by vibrations. And I translated this in, in sound poems that uh, were collectively um, uh, performed by groups of people, showing that uh, actually language and understanding uh, starts with being united, by, by being a resonance together, by, um, by harmony uh, of sound. The aspect of libraries uh, the, was always for me fascinating because for me a library, I could not, never see a library as just something that is, makes sense indoors. That is a sort of indoor collection of information and knowledge because knowledge for me is much more than um, something that is kept, preserved, but that is present in everything. And I came to, to a painting um, uh, of Antonella de Massina, which is a Renaissance painter, at the time of utopia, the time of exploration of the world, the time of exploration of nature, the first uh, landscape paintings, and people went out to, to, to walk and to be part of nature, which didn't happen in the medieval times. Uh, and as well in this painting, a library is depicted um, both indoors as outdoors. Um, the studiolo, which you see, the, the construction which you see, uh, was an, like a sort of desk, a complicated desk that um, many scholars, uh, artists and um, uh, writers had in that time. And that was both an, a sort of library as a meeting place. And so suggesting this, this openness uh, and closeness at the same time. Uh, in this painting, you see this library of a scholar of, 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 of uh, Saint Jerome uh, the, that is um, 
actually more outdoors than indoors and you see as well birds. I was always fascinated by, by how birds have knowledge uh, or um, the, represent a form of knowledge without having the need to, uh, to have words by, by singing, by, by, by the music that they produce. And uh, this uh, led uh, to a series of works um, that uh, Stefan and I showed in various occasions, uh, which are libraries for trees or libraries for birds. As you will see in the photograph, uh, you see a library uh, installed on a branch. Um, with at the end of the library, you see a bird's uh, house, hoping that in this library, a bird would come uh, to live. Uh, it's very paradoxical. Uh, it's, it's sort of ironical as well. Much of what I do has a sort of irony, even a humor in it, uh, because birds, of course, don't need any books uh, to know what this nature is about. Uh, but still, we constructed and uh, created this library for birds. As well, to show the respect for nature and that we are not like intruding, uh, you see a small pillow um, the, that is uh, protecting the contact between the library and the bird, uh, so we don't uh, uh, we don't harm uh, the tree uh, where we are uh, showing this work in. Uh, the, another example was to bring, actually, not only to show a library in a garden. Uh, and uh, showing a garden as a library, but as well showing a library as a garden. Uh, this installation in my library, in my house in Bruges, um, consists out of little pots, organic pots, uh, that uh, normally are used to, for, for little plants to start growing. And, um, um, and that can be planted in the earth uh, so they can uh, become big, um, big plants. So, but instead of putting seeds in them, or, or, or uh, we put words in them, hoping that the words would grow. And uh, uh, words need as well encouragement. They need love, they need warmth, they need light, uh, they need water. Uh, they are not just uh, concepts, they are living. Making this library to a living library. Uh, then another topic in what I do uh, is, is silence, uh, and that you will see my locative media projects as well, even in the Libraries as Gardens project, where uh, recordings of silence are as much part of the experience as the recordings of um, environments. Uh, because for me, real communication happens in silence, not in the absence of uh, sound, but in an other way of communicating that is beyond sound in a presence uh, that is beyond words. So Stefan and I made some performances in forests uh, where we connect with each other and with uh, our environment uh, in a complete focus. Um, uh, for example, the image you see of us standing around the tree connected with a shirt with uh, connected sleeves. Uh, we were standing there for, for about four hours uh, looking towards each other uh, without seeing each other, uh, but still being present one of the other as we were present of what was around us. And we were uh, the, surrounded by little birds again, the little, little uh, white stripes are words that are uh, given to uh, the nature environment. The same uh, performance we did in the library in a different uh, format, but with the same idea of being connected for several hours in silence surrounded by uh, living words, as you see on the, on the photograph. Now, we came up with the idea of a library of walks, uh, which uh, connect the same paradox, irony even, uh, because how we can preserve a walk, as a walk is something that you live in the moment and that has no duration, uh, but uh, it cannot be, uh, cannot be part of, 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 uh, of an, a material uh, format except uh, of your memory. So uh, we invited people to, to do the impossible and to tell us a story or to preserve a work uh, that was significant for them, uh, which led to a collection of like more than 400 uh, 
now even almost 500 uh, wax uh, that people brought us in glass uh, jars. Uh, with some sometimes very personal studies. First of all, we thought people would sort of collect things they see on the road, but actually put in these jars stories about their lives, because every walk is not only being in nature, it's as well being with yourself. And uh, to present these, we were thinking about their various formats, the indoors, but as well outdoors and sort of library that is um, standing in between the trees. Um, and that um, uh, actually bring back the experience to the place where they were um, collected. This led as well to sound uh, works, uh, but not only preserving the works in glass jars as objects, but as well in memories that were recorded, uh, sounds, uh, the stories, and that were transformed into uh, movement performances indoors with dancers. Um, uh, as you see here. Now, um, as you understand for me, writing is, is something that is not two dimensional at all. Uh, it is not even something that brings the, 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 the text or the writing uh, to, to an outside environment, but that is a, as a gesture that is done with the whole body. You don't need fingers to write. You don't need a pen to write. You can uh, write through your presence uh, without words. And um, for me, it was an, a revelation to find out about the possibilities and the potential of, of locative media, first with Esquitar and, um, uh, and a tool that was called Notus, uh, and then with, uh, since 2018, with CGMF, which exactly allows you to go out of the space of the paper, of the book, and to write directly on the landscape and to um, uh, let people experience a text that is written in and for the landscape uh, by listening to it. Uh, a first uh, project that, that was connecting um, libraries, uh, spaces outside uh, sounds and silences, which, which is bringing together the, the more or less the ideas that I just explained, uh, was Ecumenopolis. Uh, Ecumenopolis is, is a Greek word and it uh, means a global city, a city that is the whole planet. And it was foreseen in the 60s um, by a Greek architect uh, who expected that by now, uh, in the 21st century, there would not be separate cities anymore, but the whole planet would be one big city actually a landscape of cities. And that was uh, intriguing, first of all, by the idea that um, uh, what is still the difference uh, today between the cities where we, the, the very big cities where we, uh, where we live in, um, if you walk in Sao Paulo, if you walk in Moscow, um, do you still see or hear different things or are we uh, cities, did cities really become so similar that you hear and see everywhere the same? And um, I wanted to invite people living in these very big cities to explore that by sending recordings uh, of uh, their living environment, more specific of the environment around the libraries, of the big libraries where they live. And uh, as well, combine this, um, uh, with sounds recorded inside of the libraries, playing with silences and sounds, asking people to record sounds in libraries, which you would expect to be a silent place, but it's not at all, and to record silences of experiences of silences outside of the libraries, and to put these, um, these sounds over the cities that were participating, in this case, Sao Paulo, uh, Moscow, London, and Athens. So you were listening to uh, sounds of, of the other cities being in a particular city, like in London, listening to Moscow, Sao Paulo, and Athens. And sometimes with surprising results that uh, you were not aware at all that you were in another city and sometimes uh, feeling really another place. But as well, I'm, I'm trying to explore how the silences in libraries, which are actually sounds, as well are uh, so similar uh, as the, um, or different as the um, 
salads and salads in other cities. Lavis's gardens is, is, an, is an, a next step in this um, you know, trajectory that she drew up, uh, where um, I invite people to share their memories and stories uh, and texts uh, during the, the pandemic. Uh, in a moment that mm, a lot of gardens were closed, uh, the only thing that, that stayed was a memory about the garden, about, about the nat natural area, value wearing confinement, value wearing isolation. And my question was and is uh, to people that this is an ongoing project which will uh, go on till, um, at least till uh, the end of June, collecting the materials, asking people to share their memories about gardens recorded inside their personal reading space or library at home, uh, as well to share a text, a text of their personal library, their home library or reading space, um, and uh, with the idea to, after uh, the pandemic, to put all these audio materials on a map and at the same time um, make it accessible as a web app so you can listen to uh, the sounds in the gardens that were remembered by the people. Not only the sounds, but also asking people to record silences, they record uh, one minute of silence in their reading space to explore what is the boundary between silence and sound, between indoor and outdoor. Uh, and in a third phase, um, uh, asking the people to go to the, uh, the garden of their memory uh, to record there the sound of the garden and as well another memory, but about the time that they were in the pandemic, in isolation, uh, and map this all in one um, the map and web app. So, That is more or less the story that I uh, wanted to tell you. Um, you're all very welcome. Many of you already did, but the ones that have done it uh, uh, are welcome to participate with your recordings uh, on this map that will be created during the summer uh, with CGM map. Uh, you have seen the examples that Fred gave. It will be a similar project. And um, I'm looking forward to your questions, remarks, ideas, um, suggestions. Um, okay, so um, none of you have written anything in the chat. So um, what I'll do is uh, trust that you're all um, sensible and um, uh, happy crowd and I'll unmute you all and then mm -hmm. we'll perhaps um, see if anyone wants to ask a question. Uh, maybe um, you can either uh, use a thing at the bottom of your screen which is called reactions where you can put a uh, if you click on that, you can choose a hand clap or a thumb, uh, or else you can wave your arms uh, wildly and we'll see if we can find you and we'll uh, do try not to talk over each other. Okay, I'm going to unmute you all. Unmuted. Unmuted. So, uh, it, does anyone wish to uh, ask a question? Ask judgment. Thing. Ah, Tiago. Da <laughs> uh, carteira que está aí. Estou a ouvir. Hã? Ah? I don't oh. think Tiago is talking with us. Foi bastante interessante. It's okay. Anybody else who wants to... Uh, has a night... Has, a, has a, something to share? <laughs> Have we stunned you into silence? Silence. Yeah, that was the idea, actually. <laughs> but the sound is not, silence is not an, an absence. It's a presence of many yeah. things. <laughs> I, I am trying to get um, my local community to have memories of their favorite tree and what it means to them or something that's happened around that. So I joined this in the hope to... Um, help get inspiration for the community to respond with photographs or um, snippets of why they are important to them. So mm -hmm. um, some advice would be great because I've had a limited response so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It's a, it's a great idea. And where are you based? Where are you from? Just, uh, um, I'm in Kent, in Hearn Bay, um, which is near Canterbury. Um, hmm. No, it's a perfect tool for that. And, um, <laughs> as Fred said as well, uh, the difference between this uh, tool, CGeoMap, um, and uh, uh, other tools that are for mapping uh, mm -hmm. is that uh, it is not only a map on your computer, it is as well um, a walk that you can experience through your mobile device. So you cannot yeah. only see and hear the, the, the media indoors, but as well interact with your environment, listening to, um, to texts um, or seeing uh, media, videos and images um, uh, when you are on the places that are um, uh, that I chose. Also, Sounds yeah. like the perfect tool, and because I want to have it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Uh, so I, I love Marlene's trees behind you, Marlene. You have beautiful trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I live. Um, I live in a patch of boreal forest in Newfoundland. Oh. And I use I use it. It's all old growth forests, and I've been here for 18 years, and I use it for all my subject matter, including doing locative, site-specific poetry readings. Oh wow! People come, um, and there's some videos I did a. It's 10 years ago now. Uh, I did a project on my website called the uh, Boreal Poetry, a virtual walk, a virtual walk of the Boreal Poetry Garden. And there are very little videos that are pinpointed on an aerial photograph to the spot that the poem belongs. So when you play the video, mm -hmm. um, it's a poem about, it's a video poem about something in that exact spot. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's great. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat. So uh, maybe I can ask uh, Rich, um, Rich, Rich Blundell. Yeah. Are you there, Rich? Yeah. I can ask my question just. Uh, <laughs> Whoever's got themselves, uh, can you mute yourself right. for us have a background conversation? All right, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead, Rich. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if um, Fred and Geert have any plans on using um, as a uh, and the project as a way to initiate ecological restoration or conservation projects. I can see that this would be a great way to capture public sentiment about different issues around conservation of trees and other habitats. Can you imagine it being used that way? And uh, yes, I see a question connected with your uh, question from, from Cathy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I am interested in the two ways communication you talk of between human and land animals. Could you talk of an example of when the land animals were able to communicate back, back to, your, to your intervention? Then uh, the question is that uh, 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 spending time in nature op open up uh, a, channel, a lot of channels of communication uh, when we start to listen to birds uh, also, uh, we we really enter into we can enter into this communication, uh, and then it's when we uh, discover the richness, uh, the beauty, the intelligence of, uh, of 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 places that we can really start to understand that we have to preserve uh, this area, this area because they are part. Uh, this intelligence is part of our own intelligence. Uh, and we are part of this intelligence. So, so yes, I think that locative media uh, is uh, very uh, powerful to open the door. I mean, it's not about going somewhere and, and 
giving a lot of information. It's more about going somewhere and opening the door or the window, giving some keys and, and, and let, let this communication happen and enter it to you. Absolutely. As well, I would like to stress the importance and, and um, activeness of listening, uh, listening to what is around you. It's not uh, only about doing, about changing. Uh, it's about uh, uh, being in an, uh, in a harmony or resonance with what is around you, that, which is a state of communication, of, um, of dialogue uh, that is uh, not, use, not using an, an exchange in, in, in the strict sense of a word, but in a listening to the other, is as well um, hearing uh, what is the other uh, saying. And uh, uh, this happens in nature as well. Uh, the communicating to listening. And that's why silence, or silence does not exist in, in the sense of an absence, but silence as an, as an openness uh, to the possibilities, to, to what is around you, um, uh, and to the intelligence, to the consciousness around you. Uh, in that sense, listening is already restoring. Making places where people are, uh, where it becomes possible again to listen, uh, the, it is for me already an important uh, action. Yeah, I want to comment about this. That, uh, I believe that the problem with uh, technology uh, and when we talk about communication, in fact, uh, the contrary happens. Uh, we are more and more disconnected uh, with the environment. And then uh, it's really uh, necessary to, to shift uh, this situation. And uh, yeah, locative media can, can, can be the way to shift this situation and, and use uh, technology as an entry door. And, and it's absolutely necessary to avoid uh, disruption. Uh, I mean, if I go outdoors and I show a video on a, a mobile, mobile phone, uh, no, uh, I, I disrupt the experience with the physical place. It's really necessary to consider the physical uh, place with all the inhabitants and life forms mm -hmm. as, as a part of your story or, 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 or what you want to, to share. No? Uh, so, yeah, it's very interesting new language, really, I think so. Uh, we, we've had a couple more um, uh, pieces put into the chat. They're not actually questions. They're more affirmations that people have uh, uh, much enjoyed uh, Hairs and uh, Fred's um, uh, chat. But is there uh, anyone else who has some questions to ask? This is your opportunity. Hi. Um, I, I just, because I didn't, I didn't hear my question get answered, I'm going to try, I'll ask it again. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's okay. I, I understand that it just got lost in the in the uh, in the uh, energy of it. But uh, my question is: um, Can you imagine this tool, the CGO Map tool, and the uh, libraries project being integrated into actual on the ground conservation or ecological restoration, or even like the preservation of particular trees? because it seems like a really great way to capture the local community's sentiment about different aspects of you know, our environment, whether it's trees or habitats or uh, land, that kind of thing. Can you imagine it being integrated into an actual activist um, project? Um, yes, I do. Uh, the, in the sense that uh, bringing people together, bringing them to a place, to listen, uh, to um, uh, listen not only to their environment as well, to contents that, that, that emerge out of uh, um, interactions, dialogue, discussions that are uh, with people that live or, or, or experience the place uh, the, uh, as it is, uh, as it was, as it could be. Um, this could trigger, this already triggers a transformation of the place. Uh, 
It places not only the physical presence of, of its nature, but as well how people see it, uh, imagine it. And um, uh, by walking, by using locative media, uh, the, uh, by using dialogue, uh, this already starts a process of change. Um, and as well, preservation of what was, and um, as well, imagining a future for the place and uh, making possible that this future will happen um, as a first step. The actual let's say preservation itself could follow on this step of uh, bringing people together in action. Um. Yeah, uh, also I believe that uh, it's interesting uh, to seed uh, memories in, in, in places. Uh, memories uh, where you, you, you can really, uh, when you are near this tree, you could discover stories, uh, a personal emotion from other people. Uh, it's, it's a great idea. The problem is that we are losing our memory. Uh, in the meaning that uh, what we do with, uh, with technology disappears. Uh, I mean, when you, when you create an app or you, when you create an app, a, a website, what do you expect in 50 years? Where will be all this information? So it's also this problem is that if we make, you want to make really relevant and useful uh, this digital layer of memories, we also have to ask us how we will preserve this memory. Because if we lose this memory, uh, it will be really, uh, you know, uh, those terrible, are, those terrible. Are, those, are, those are really good points. And it, it just occurred to me, and you may have mentioned this and I just missed it, that you're kind of covering both ends of the communication with this. Through the, through the library's part, you're in the listening mode. And then through the CGO map, you're in the expression mode. And and uh, it just seems like a nice combo. But, and then your point about forgetting because these are digital you know, materials, it, speaking to my question, which is about, well, how do we then translate that, those relationships that are forged into actual trees, into mm. actual landscapes, into actual ecosystems. So I don't know, just seems like you got a really cool uh, package of, of, of um, efforts there. So thank you. Okay, we have about uh, seven or eight minutes left. So um, do chip in with another question. I've just posted something in the chat about uh, a source of where you can find out about other similar locative media um, initiatives and projects. And also uh, where in fact, uh, there's a, uh, we've just started up a, a every two weeks, a, a cafe, which is an online meeting of people who are interested in creating uh, work uh, using this platform or similar platforms. So um, if you go to the walk, this and create uh, org site, you'll find it there uh, and can find out details there. And we, we have more than uh, 200 uh, uh, pieces um, created in this sort of way that you can look at and explore and listen to. So uh, uh, do check that out. Um, and also um, just a quick uh, plug again for the Urban Tree Festival. So uh, we have 41 further events uh, over the next nine days. So I hope you'll be signing up for some of those as well. Uh, they cover all sorts of topics from uh, communing with trees and uh, well-being, uh, mental health, uh, right through to uh, much more technical stuff about uh, pestilence amongst trees. Uh, but what we hope is that you'll find them uh, entertaining and informative. And as I say, if you're feeling you can afford it, do please put your hand in your pocket and donate to the festival so we can offer the contributors uh, an honorarium at some point. But anyway, let's have any more questions. A couple, uh, couple more questions. I see a question uh, of uh, yeah, Alice. Yeah, yeah. Him. Um, uh, the hi. How do, uh, hi. <laughs> hi there. Good to see you. Um, listen, the one thing I've been thinking about is, as you know, I do a lot of work with sound and soundscapes, is um, there's a flatness to recorded sound. And if people can use binaural sound recordings, which is a 360 degree system, you will get the full effect of being in that place. 
Uh, it's difficult because you need mm -hmm. the technology, but it will be a more immersive experience. Harder to record in one way because you need a small recorder, but 360 degrees will make you feel like you're there. Yeah, uh, we did some uh, projects like this. Um, for example, in 2017, uh, we have uh, uh, rebuilt uh, with the Sunwall Collective uh, artist uh, a, sound, a sound composition of the, of the rainforest on top of New York. And every sound we uh, were uh, uh, not exactly binaural, but you had the panning. Then you could see where the sound came from. And when you arrived, the sound it was stronger. Then you could really navigate in it. So this technology do exist. It's expensive for the moment. But uh, for example, the guys from ECOS uh, working in, 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 uh, in England are, are working on a prototype of, of a binaural uh, sound experience. So you can check uh, ECOS, uh, uh, the ECOS website and you could apply for the prototype uh, to make a binaural, uh, like a binaural uh, sounds, locative sounds compositions. Yeah, and they should be listened to with earphones. Because if uh, you listen to it without the earphones, you don't hear the binaural sound. Yeah, you have two, two ways. Uh, or, or you can use a sensor on your mobile to move the sound. Or, or you can have a sensor on your, on your ear, uh, headsets. And then when you move your head, it changes the sound. It yeah. depends. But you have a lot of different technologies for this. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Although this technology is indeed... Um, um, a big added value and open possibilities at the other uh, uh, side. Um, uh, we have chosen as well for CGM for the, for the simple solution because we believe in the being immersed in your environment is to the stories that you tell that you experience on location. And um, it is not completely dependent of the technology you use, uh, but of the good stories of the, of the, um, that uh, connect you uh, with the place. And uh, audio in itself is already completely immersive uh, the, because it's, um, it, you cannot escape uh, from, 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 from sound. And uh, the ultimate uh, augmented uh, reality will always be um, the, the sound. If, if it is stereo or uh, mono or uh, ambisonics or AD, um, at the end, it doesn't matter so much uh, for uh, the connection. In my perspective, at least. <clears throat> For storytellers, it's it's very interesting uh, because you can navigate with your navigate with your ears. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting future. Okay, time for one more last question. Who'd like to uh, pitch in? Anyone like one last question? Oh, very quiet. There are some questions still in the chat box, I see, it for various ones. If we are not managing to answer them now, we will be happy to answer them by email uh, after. For that, we will need your email, though. But, uh, yes, there are uh, several questions. Yes. But, uh, um, I think, they're, I think they're, not, they're not actually uh, questions, actually. I think they're more just discussion points. But um, mm -hmm. we've still got uh, two or three minutes left. And of course, uh, some of you may uh, be in faraway places. Uh, you may never connect with these people again, but you may want to put in the, or in the chat uh, a means by which people can uh, perhaps find out about your own work. So do type in the chat if you want to uh, include your your web address or your blog or uh, something like that. I, I wouldn't recommend you put your email in, uh, but I would, uh, if you want to type in your your blog or, or your website, please do. And uh, uh, the other people in the room will be able to uh, look you up and find out what you're doing and share ideas and things. So, yes. And as well as- Deirdre specific... Hayden has an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deirdre Hayden, could everyone say one or two words about how COVID-19 has impacted their working, positive or negative? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Let's take this as an, as an indeed and last observation. Uh, the, uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, you, I suppose you all have the email of Libraries as Guardians um, uh, that was communicated through the, um, through the announcement. 
If you have specific questions that we were not able to answer now, please send them to us by email and uh, we'll uh, be happy to, uh, to, to talk with you further in the video chat or by email. Um, um, anyway, about COVID-19 and walking in this, uh, um, uh, this would be a very interesting subject to, to continue in the next uh, um, session we have at four o'clock, Rich Brundell uh, will introduce uh, his project with OICA and a call to artists to, um, to create works of arts uh, based on eco ecological intelligence. Uh, and very uh, related to what we're experiencing all now as well. Uh, so if any of you would like to continue the, the discussion and uh, your questions, uh, you're very welcome to register uh, for the four o'clock meeting session um, later today with Rich and me. Uh, yeah, and if you have the chance to, to watch uh, Rich's uh, part, um, presentation, it's really, really, really interesting. We have been very, very inspired by, by his views. So your questions we can pick up uh, uh, at that moment, if you would like to, or you send them by email. All right, well, um, I, I'm wrapping up the meeting, so I just want to thank very much uh, Hert and Fred for joining us. As uh, Hert has already mentioned, uh, he and Rich Blundell are uh, leading on the Into the Artmosphere at four o'clock, and we are still uh, allowing booking of tickets for that. Uh, so if you want to sign up, please do. Um, booking closes half an hour before the uh, actual event. So if you're booking for anything for the Urban Tree Festival, uh, do it within 30 minutes of the start and you'll still get on. Um, uh, as I say, a big thank you both to Hert and for Fred. And um, thank you everyone for coming. And um, we look forward to seeing you again on the Urban Tree Festival. Look out uh, for the YouTube channel we have. And we'll look, see you all soon. Thank you then and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye.